Hello, everybody. I'm sitting here in front of my uh, laptop, and I just wanted to chat with you for a few minutes before we got on with the video. Uh, I've got some product over here that I'm going to sh um, show you. Uh, I have a, a worm tower that has three trays that actually has the various stages of vermicomposting um, that are perfect for you to see um, the different stages. Uh, so that you can make a determination as to when you might want to harvest your worms out of your product so that you can use it and get the worms into fresh bedding. Now, there isn't any right or wrong time to do this. It really is just a personal preference. It dep depends on <clears throat> what you want to be using as the end product. The longer you let the worms work the product, the more castings there's going to be in it. Um, and essentially... It, it, it's just going to determine as to how much you um, dilute the product as you're using it in your <clears throat> planting circumstances. So if you're using the product, let's say you're using it to, to plant some seedlings, what I would do is I would actually um, dry the material enough that it can go through an eighth inch screen and sift it through an eighth inch screen, separate the castings out, and add the castings to your seeding mix. As far as using it for any other purpose, I would just use it straight out of the vermicompost bin um, just the way it is and not worry about separate, separating out anything. Um, depending on how long you've let your worms work the material, you're going to want to um, you know, mix the material with uh, either soil or planting mix or you know, just depending on how you're using that product. Um, you are going to want to um, mix it so that you've got about 20 to 25 percent, um, 10 percent of, vermic of castings. And the way you're going to determine that is that you're going to um, take your material and you're going to sift the castings out and see what kind of ratio you have of castings to vermicompost. And then you know um, how much you need to cut it with either soil or potting soil to get your uh, correct percentage of castings um, in your mix. Because um, with castings, more is not better. So if you're using your product uh, to grow seedlings or to try to get a higher, higher yield, say, with your tomato plants, or whatever, you want to make sure that you're using enough uh, castings, which is where the value is in your product, you're using enough castings to um, provide the benefit, but not so much that it throws the, the soil uh, biology off in the other direction. Because it really is uh, an equation um, of of microbiology in the soil that creates a healthy environment for your plant to grow in. So uh, with that said, we are going to uh, move on over here to the video camera and I'm going to show you first off uh, the, the main bedding material that I use is horse manure. We're going to take a look at the horse manure as it looks before it goes into the worm bin. And then we're going to look at it um, after the worms have worked it um, for a couple of weeks. And then we're going to look at it when um, the product is pretty much ready for the worms to come out of it. I'm going to show you how to um, coax your worms to leave the material uh, in a friendly way and uh, where you can start drying the material uh, to get it to a point where you can use it. And then I'm going to show you uh, the material after the worms are, are, have left it and it's been dried and it's ready to be used. So we'll see all of those different stages and hopefully you'll get a good idea of where your worm bins are at and where they're going and when you will be ready to start um, using the material out of it. And so hopefully all of you are prepared to do that because that is one of the tremendous values of worm bin composting. So I will see you in a few minutes. Okay, This bye. is just um, raw manure. Hasn't been worked by the worms at all. You can see a lot of texture to it. Um, and uh, smells very earthy. 
It has a few critters crawling around in it, some sow bugs and and such. And um, this is ready for the worms. Okay, so it's very recognizable that it is manure and um, has definite color and texture. Okay, of the so manure. here we have material that the worms um, have worked in for a couple of weeks. And when I first put it down, it was very rough. Um, looked a lot like the the bedding when I've the one that I just finished up. Um, and when they work the material, it gets very smooth like this. It's really, really amazing. But you can tell that the worms have um, consumed the manure out of this material and have left behind the, um, the straw and the wood. Okay, and we're going to get our hands in here. We're going to turn this a little bit. You can see underneath, you can see the difference in the, the material here underneath where the worms have been working it and it's getting darker and it's starting to lose the, the texture. And um, so as the worms work it and leave behind their castings, then it starts looking different and feeling different. It's going to feel different. It's not going to... I thought I saw some mating worms there. They sort of disappeared into the... We'll keep our eyes open in case we see them mating because that really is a, an amazing thing to see. I know it amazes me a lot to see that. But the material is very fluffy and starts to change. The texture starts changing. It starts um, losing its coarseness. And be, starts feeling fluffy, okay? Starts feeling very light and fluffy because of all the castings. Castings are just amazing, amazing, it's amazing stuff. Anyway, so you should be doing something like this with your worms at least once a week. Getting your hands in here, getting an idea for how wet the environment is, um, getting a good look at the worms, seeing if they, if they look plump and moist and happy and seeing if they're mating, seeing if they're laying cocoons, you know, really getting a good idea of exactly what your worms are doing in your environment because if they're not happy then you need to start playing around, you know, try to get an idea of what you can do differently for them to be happy.